you for staying with us. Now, with the growing call to prosecute culprits in the petrol subsidy scam, uh, even as the debate over the uh, petrol subsidy and need for palliative persists, and the endless talk about oil subsidy, oil theft, and the people also should be prosecuted, what are the things that the authorities need to do, put in place to ensure that lives and livelihoods of the people who are directly affected in the Niger Delta are not negatively uh, made any worse than it already is. Help us uh, welcome this morning Ovuzere Macaulay, who is APC leader, Delta State, a former commissioner of special duties. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. Well, the natural question anyone would want to ask you is, uh, in the previous administration, the vice president, former vice president, uh, Osimajo, you know, led uh, quite a number of um, efforts in ensuring the uh, cleanup of some parts of the Niger Delta. Can okay, any update you can give us on that? What? Yeah, I, I, I would not say there has been something reasonably done hmm. when you talk about the cleanup of the Niger Delta. Uh, the issues are there and uh, you can see them on a daily basis. The aquatic life is completely gone. The people cannot do their farming. There is nothing really working as a result of oil exploration over the years. Mm. So when you say cleaning, where exactly, where specifically, which they're part of clean the clean up, particularly? The Oguni clean up has been an age long thing. It's has been it agitated for a very long time. Has it started? Well, I cannot specifically say it has started because I am not there in Oguni. But from what I read from the agitation that's still on, I don't think anything reasonably has been done in Oguni. So when you in part of River State. Mm. Yeah. So when you hear conversations, uh, you know, uh, from various quarters talking about the host communities playing a role uh, in protecting the uh, pipe oil infrastructure for the Federal Republic of Nigeria, how does it, you know, he, come across to you? Yeah, I was one of those who agitated for it. So it was at the stage you now was secretary to government. And I actually was in the forefront of the resolution of the eight-year-old Wari George security crisis. So I can tell you about that. People should not be talking of their participation. We should be talking of part ownership. Everybody wants to protect where his daily bread comes from. Getting them involved in media jobs or even in the surveillance, yes, it's right to get them involved in surveillance because they have a good knowledge of the geography and the topography of the area. But that is not really all you need to secure their confidence and protect those facilities. Before 2003, jobs were not even given to the communities at all. And we sat down at Security Council and said, no, these people have to be involved. And we met with Shell, we met with Chevron, and we worked out how they can be taken along. And that helped to reduce the agitations mm -hmm. and so many issues. But thereafter, it ended there. What we should be talking about now is that a community, like Uborodo community, for instance, where oil exploration has taken place for over 50 years, what is the life of those people? So, if so, I could so comment. My apologies, Carlo. You, you quickly follow up on something that he mentioned. You talked about part ownership. Yes. What does that mean? Part ownership is, even if it is 5% or 10%, interest of the people in that organization. So that at the end of every year, they're looking forward to something. Which organization? We're talking of the Niger Delta. Okay. And you talked about the degradation, that is the cleanup. Yeah. What is the cause of the cleanup? Is the oil exploration. Okay. That's the cause of the cleanup of the problem. Yeah. So if the people are involved. Involved in what in particular? Uh, you talked about ownership, that it's that ownership bit that I'm trying to, what, what, what ownership, part ownership of what? Part ownership of those companies, of the shareholding. Maybe I use the word shareholding. Of the oil producing companies. Of the oil producing companies. Right. But isn't that, that brings their interest? Isn't that part uh, part of the you know responsibility of the NNPCL? Isn't NNPCL you know one way or the other part owners of these companies and at the, uh, by, by invariably 
but you know, owned by the federal government of Nigeria. The, owned by the federal government doesn't represent the interests of the community. Federal government is all of us. How about the derivation fund that goes to the to the oil producing states? Isn't that part of the ownership or compensation system? The derivation fund is taken from the the lot, the bulk of what goes there. You don't think but that when you enough? talk of protection and the, what concerns the life of the people immediately, you cannot tie it just because it is a derivation fund. So that is scared of their interest. After all, most of the states, the derivation fund is not used only for the oil communities. Other parts that are not oil producing benefit from derivation funds. Well, I, I know that this has been on for a while, this, what I call it, campaign or agitation to have the you know, oil producing communities part ownership. I remember as far back as even 2010, before that, there's been that clamor. And I, I wonder if this is not the first time this proposal is being presented, what has been the response? I'm talking from the government, from the companies themselves, because it seems you're saying that if there's part ownership, then issues of oil bunkering, vandalism, oil theft, would we'll stop. We'll get into that whether or we'll, not it's... We'll reduce. We'll not reduce. Stop totally. Or may not even stop. But we'll not stop what totally. response have you been getting from, you know, those in charge, government and oil producing companies as to why this is not happening or why this maybe cannot happen? Well, like I said, if the report has been positive or the responses have been positive, then we won't still be talking about it. It's because it has not been positive. So what they tell you, what do they tell you? Do they say that, well, this is not possible, we're the ones coming with the investment, so we can't give you? What kind of response uh, have you been getting? You see, this is an issue that will have gone through legislation. It's not an issue for one person to just come and say, yes, I've done it. So it's an issue that will pass through legislation. Mm -hmm. And it is the responsibility of the government to say, no, this thing this we're asking for is, will help us in a way. So let us bring it through legislation. But you've had, and I that mean, has not been the, done. The Niger Delta, if I can use that, or the South South has representation in the National Assembly. I mean, we saw what happened during the PIB public hearing where there was a fracas and all of that. I wonder, are those issues raised? Because I would like to imagine lawmakers come back home. They have town halls with, you know, constituencies. I like to imagine. You can debunk whether that is true yeah, because you or want not. To us are those, discussion entirely. Are those they actually issues? Hold those town hall meetings with their people from time to time. You are from the community too. I don't think how many times your people have invited you that there's a town hall meeting, your senator or your house or rep. I mean, you can't to be too sure. I'm, I'm speaking particularly about the Niger Delta. So are these issues raised, uh, I mean, with the lawmakers so they can take the representation there? Because during that public hearing, what we saw was not a good representation of the Niger Delta. So are the real issues tabled? And what has been the response of the lawmakers? If you ask me, as far as those peculiar issues are concerned, the views of the people have not been fully carried to that National Assembly. But, I mean, we saw representation from the communities, for example, during that public hearing. Yes. When the communities go there and make their representation, who takes it up from there? And how much of it were they taking? How seriously did they take them? Yes, they were invited, they make representations. What came out of it? We're talking about the final product of every exercise. Mm. I, I mean, you were also, I think, the Commissioner for Energy uh, yes. at some point, if I'm yes. correct. So at least you have you're also a journalist, you're a journalist, unionist, so man of many parts, but basically you will have very good information on the oil sector. So if you say that, if the communities are given part ownership, then the issues of oil theft would reduce. Maybe Nigeria, Nigeria can start doing over 2 million barrels per day. Are you saying that is, the, that is the reason why these issues persist? And that primary reason why people say, well, if you don't give us part ownership, then we'll take it some way or the other. Okay, let me tell you this. The area, like we all know, has been long neglected. It's that long neglect that gave room to the agitation. So what we're doing is now walking back, what do we do? The issue of neglect has been established. Because if you go to most of these communities, there are no schools, there are no roads, their lands have been degraded, their aquatic life is gone. So the people are at the point of frustration. When you see a child of nine, ten years who is supposed to be in school, paddling came in the morning to get a means of livelihood. And then you look up there, you see either Chevron Yard or Shell Yard or any of these oil companies living in a place that you could just compare to somewhere in Europe. Across the fence. Until 2003, 
Have you bought a little thing? I mean, uh, yeah, have you bought a little thing? have drinking water. That's in Delta State. In Delta State, and as at that time, Chevron has occupied that place for 40 years. Why, 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 why? Electricity was why a problem. But if you could speak to, to that. But the government sat and forced them, you must give this for electricity, you must extend this water you are drinking to them. So, um, from the, um, you know, the, the laws and all of that that govern oil exploration, are they responsible primarily for providing water, electricity for the communities, or is it the government? That should be part of their social responsibility. That should be part of their corporate but social responsibility. It is a role of government. It's so government, government failed, and then they were meant to pick it up, is what you're yes. saying. Yes. Well, it, it, um, I mean, you talked about the, the social responsibility. Um, it is a social responsibility. That to say it that should be part it, of is it. That supposed, is that saying that they haven't done anything at, at all in terms of social responsibility? What I'm responsibility? telling you that anything those people have gotten is an outcome of agitation. Even corporate social responsibility projects? Most of those, like I've told you about how they got water, how they got electricity. There was a serious agitation that people have to be flown from worry to that place to be able to assuage the community. They sat there for days. And women. It goes back to the question that Kaori is asking. Um, government failed. I mean, we talked about the 13% derivation, and I'm pretty sure that that's not the only one. We've talked about the NDDC, uh, you know, the Niger Delta Development Commission. It's supposed to be part of their responsibility to ensure that these things happen. Right. Uh, but then, so the 13%, for instance, goes to the states. NDDC is an organ of the federal government that is supposed to be having interventions. Is there any way or any instrument by the communities or you know in individuals such as yourself to ensure that these monies are spent the way they ought to be spent okay maybe i should ask you differently you have been in government in delta state how was the 13 percent derivation fund in delta state spent okay 13 percent in Delta State. you have what they call it the super deck it's a commission for the development of the oil producing communities and by the that law is different from the NDDC yes that is data state now peculiar to data on the issue of 13 percent okay and the law establishing it states that 50 percent of the derivation fund should go to that commission for the purpose of handling issues that directly involve those communities that is how it goes in data state but what i'm saying is if you look at the magnitude of the problems of those areas it will shock you because, like I'm saying, now, we're talking about building bridges. No, I, I get what you... Let's but, do... No, see, no, let me, let people me finish. will make reference... Yeah, that's what I'm finished. Okay. Let me finish. All right. So the 13%, yeah. where 50% is tied to those areas, yeah. cannot effectively address some of those issues. But when you now talk of the NDDC, you have a point there. But the issue is, if you ask me, this is my own opinion, the NDDC has not met the role of intervention that is supposed to play. So who is asking them questions? Who is taking them on? Who, who put them there? So the agitation cannot go to the NDDC, but can go to the oil producing companies. Agitation has gone to NDDC, agitation has gone to states. Okay. The agitation is everywhere. Whoever can take up this matter, take it up. You seem to be saying now that the state government, the SOPADEC, using the derivation funds, has done well. I'm but not the saying, NDDC what, what I'm saying is, is that what well. is on the derivation or what comes to the derivation, I haven't shared it. Because you see, when you say derivation, oil producing, you, you say oil producing state, oil producing community. So when you say this derivation, you cannot put the whole 100% into those communities alone. Because those other persons in that state also have to benefit from it. Just Isn't like the that the nation. reason that the money, like Isn't the that the reason the money was given to the oil producing state in the first place? Yes. Because of the oil producing communities. If the whole nation is benefiting from the oil, you cannot now deny part of that state not having any share. So if you say 50% goes to the communities right. and the entire part of the other state, share from the other 50%, which is joined to the normal accrual to the state. Right. Just quickly, as we wind down, sir, so if a lot of people are clamoring for a probe, not just of the subsidy regime, but oil thefts, they want names. Do you think names of community leaders would spring up if this probe eventually happens? Well, in case for oil theft, I don't see anybody. 
You see, let me tell you, there's a lot of technology instilling so oil. community leaders, community members are not, you cannot are not a part I'm of I'm not the swearing. Order. I'm not taking an oath on their behalf. But for the, for the little I know, I have visited where there are oil, explor where oil explorations. I see the technology involved. A layman cannot do it. Okay. Even getting to those points where those pipes are losing, it is not easy for you to so know essentially that. Essentially, you agree it's that there should be... It's an elite So do you agree then with those that say that security agencies, in fact, at the very top, are responsible for this as well? Not only security agencies. more be joint team because it's not only one person. Okay. You can't tie it to only security agencies. Oh. Why you cannot... Well, I guess this is an ongoing conversation because it's not something we should keep quiet on. Ovuzure Macaulay, APC leader in Delta State and former Commissioner of Special Duties, thank you so much for being a part of our conversation. You're welcome. Well, we have some uh, comments oh, yes. from our people. Well, take a look at this tweet from Law Alpha C, and it's on, well, the EU's final report, saying, while we stoutly and boldly rebuff the EU's final report on the recently conducted general elections, let us exercise our conscience to examine, or rather to admit some truths embedded in the report and scheme to improve going forward. This one is from Henry. It's an email and says, Fuel subsidy scam and impact of removal, it's very mind-boggling that both the government and the people are caressing a situation that has brought us all to our knees. Corruption and lack of accountability. I expect the National Assembly to reopen the probe on the subsidy regime or even the federal government commencing a judicial probe. Our people should not remain helpless as thieves steal, kill, destroy and abort the hope of a better today and tomorrow. I have this email from Edward Tiku talking about subsidy removal. He says, removal of subsidy, which is causing untold hardship on the population, is not right in every ramification. The poor Nigerians are told to sacrifice for the tumor to be removed, but those in government are not doing the same. What government should have done is to look at the corruption in the subsidy system and tackle that by punishing and fixing the process to make it accountable. If that is done, all the so-called money claimed to have been spent on subsidy will be clear to all, unless the government cannot fight corruption. That's from Edward Tico. All right, just before we go, we have time for one more thing. Residents of Trademore Estate in Abuja have shot down that estate uh, because they say they are protesting the planned demolition of the estate by FCT, that's the Federal Capital Development Authority. So they're back and forth on this one. It's been a matter that's gone on. The FCDA plans to demolish that place because they claim that, uh, what, part of what we read this morning, mm. they didn't have proper documents they because have no of flooding. approved building plan. Yeah, because they are trying to connect it to why there's flooding. But some of the residents, they say no, that that is not the case because they need to understand the background concerning why this happened. So all of that, we will be bringing you here at channel, suggesting to keep it locked, and then we'll get you the backstory concerning why and what led to this. Whether or not the FCDA will go on with the demolition, considering what is going on, we will bring all of that to you. Well, that is the show today. We do thank you all for watching. We'll see you again uh, tomorrow. I'm Chamberlain, so goodbye. Thank you. I'm Mal Pelgun Yusuf. I'm Kairoki Kilu. I'm Ayamakine. Have a wonderful rest of your day.